Christine Stevens, MBA, is joining me today out of California. Um, Christine, actually, her and her team won an award for a campaign on a day in the life. I mean, are you facing issues with hiring for certain positions? Um, I think everybody just raised their hand. Yep, just raise your hand in the air. Even if you're driving down the road, even if you're uh, walking right now or you're doing your laundry, I want your hand up in the air. We're all struggling. Um, this whole campaign came after HR came and asked Christine, hey, do you need a flyer? because we need to hire some people. And oh my gosh, how many times have you been asked that, right? So um, Christine's gonna share a little bit more about you know, how they do social media, how it works in their school district of almost 20,000 kids. Then she's gonna break down the specifics of this day in the life campaign. We've got links for you in the show notes. She's gonna share some other successful campaigns as well. But she's just really gonna talk about how she's been able to build a consistent storytelling machine at Redland School um, because of all the stories and the positive stories that she's telling. So I'm really excited for you to learn. And just a side note, I got to give a shout out. I forgot to ask Christine, the son, your son's name. But I'm giving a shout out right now to Christine's son because he's listening to me on the podcast. And I hear that you think that my accent is actually cool. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, because this is just the way I talk, it's just the way I was born and raised, and I am who I am, and he really likes my accent. So if you enjoy listening to my accent as well, maybe that's the only reason you listen to this podcast. Awesome. But I, re I interview really cool people, and, and I'm telling you, your mom, Christine, is doing some really super cool things. She does have an accent of her own. You just don't recognize it because you live with her all the time and hear her talk. Um, but anyways, uh, just want to give you a shout out. And guys, I will also want to give all of my listeners a shout out. Hopefully you've subscribed to this podcast, but have you ever left me a review? Okay, reviews on podcasts actually help me reach more people. Because when you go to a podcast, you're like, should I listen to this? You check the reviews, right? So I've got a lot of really great reviews out there, but I'm looking for more. Um, they don't have to be great. They just have to be honest. I'm not asking you to write something up. Maybe now you're just going to say, I really like listening to this because of the Wisconsin accent. Um, I almost sound like I'm from Fargo, but I'm not. Um, but certainly I would really love a genuine, honest review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Okay. So now we got a lot to cover today, but we're going to jump in as always to a K-12 PR all right, today's K-12 PR tip is just making sure that you are following other awesome schools because there are great ideas happening all the time. And every year, I actually give out social media awards to schools from across the country. They are called the Golden Gribbles, um, but it's really just social media awards for different categories. And um, once I select the winners, and we had like, almost 300 uh, entries this year. Um, once I select the winners, I do a webinar that talks through and explains the winners and what they did and why it works and why it's important. So if you would like to watch that webinar, it's on demand right now. And I, I, along with a lot of other webinars and um, free downloads over on my website, um, but I'm gonna link to it in the show notes here. You can head over at any time to socialschoolforedu.com slash resources. And it's a whole page of things to make your life easier as a social media manager. And guess what? They're all free. Yes, I'm telling you, they're all free. The only thing you got to do is plug in your email in order to grab it. Um, but uh, we've got that, that resource uh, sheet. And then in there, you're going to see the webinar, but I'm going to leave you the direct link to grab that webinar right in the show notes and keep following other schools because they're doing really, really cool stuff. And now let's learn the really, really cool stuff that Christine's doing with her school district in California. So let's get started. Hello, Christine Stevens. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. You're joining us from sunny California. Very sunny. It's still summer weather, even though fall just started, but we're getting there. So yeah, <laughs> that is good. Well, um, I'm so, so excited that you are, are joining us. We 
saw each other in person at in at Enspra, which seems like just yesterday, but it was quite a few months ago in St. Louis. Um, mm-hmm. But before we jump into all of that, Christine, what I'd like to do is for you to share a little bit of your background and your current role with uh, Redlands Unified School District. Sure. Um, When it comes to just like my education background, um, I got my communications degree from Vanguard University, which is in Costa Mesa, California. So think about 15 minutes from the beach. Um, That was my best four years there because lovely weather. And then um, prior to COVID, I started doing my master's in business administration with an emphasis in marketing management over at Cal State University, San Bernardino. So kind of my background is along the lines of communication and marketing. Um, At the time, not really knowing where I can go with it, but because it was so broad, um, I felt like at least I could start there. Um, As far as my career goes, um, right after college, my my first big girl job was working at a magazine company called Stampington & Company. Um, I started off as just helping out in the office with um, working with the different artists that we featured in our magazines. Um, And then I applied to be assistant editor for a year or so. And then my last two years there, I was managing editor. So I oversaw five magazine titles, kind of going from like handbags to clothing, to jewelry, to home decor, um, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, It was a lot of writing, a lot for like a 24, 25 year old at the time, but I did enjoy working there. Um, And then, Over time, I had a baby and living out there in um, uh, lovely Costa Mesa when all our family was, you know, an hour away, it was a little bit harder. So my husband and I decided to move a little bit more inland. So we live um, in the Inland Empire, for those of you that may not know that area. And I applied for a job at Cryerop, which is Colton Redlands Ukaipa ROP. Um, Started out as a program specialist working with CTE uh, programs and online programs, and then kind of just went up the ladder and went up to becoming the admin assistant to the superintendent. And that's where I kind of utilized more of my communications and marketing background because we didn't have a comms department. It was everything was coming out from the office. And at the time, she was overwhelmed with like, there's so much communication needs to go out or we need to put things on social media. And I said, well, I have a background on that. Let me work on that for a bit. So I did that for a couple of years. Um, and then a position opened up at Redlands Unified School District for their um, district and community specialist slash public information officer. So I applied and I got it. And I've been here since October, 2021. Okay. So a little bit after the start of the pandemic, but it was still yeah. probably super crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did the job exist before you took it at Redlands? Yeah. So um, there was someone that was in the position before me, and then she had the opportunity to grow and move up to county schools. And so that's how that job opened up. Okay. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about Redlands. Um, Like how big of a school district, how many schools do you have, all of that? Yeah. So currently our student enrollment is over um, 19,600 students. Um, we have 26 schools, so 16 elementary schools, four middle schools, uh, three high schools, one alternative um, education school, um, one adult ed school, and then um, kind of like a hybrid, like online um, school as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how big is your communications department? So we are a team of three. Okay. <laughs> Before it was just a a one person position. And then um, just the nature of the job, you're one day you could be doing filming and then the other day you're doing crisis communication and solving problems on social media. So I had asked the superintendent at the time if I could expand the team. I was just asking for one person. He's like, well, why not two? So um, the last year and a half, I've been working with two other staff members that I get to say, do the fun projects. So they go out to the different school sites, events, take really great photos, um, do really great videos, post it on social media. And I do the harder stuff, which is not as fun, but I do enjoy that as well. Okay. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, Your superintendent must really believe in communications. I mean, Mm -hmm. you should have at least three people, if not maybe four, 
for a school district your size, but how cool, like everybody listening right now, Christine is like, oh my gosh, I wish I did that where I <laughs> ask for one person and then they're like, hey, why don't you have, you know, ask for or get, get, get two? Yeah. No, I really liked it. I think because we have a very, uh, uh, I have a new superintendent now, which he still believes in communications, okay. but at the time he was like, yeah, like I, I want about, I'm all about, you know, sharing our, our story, our narrative to the community. And that just falls on you. Let's expand that team a little bit. And, you know, the board members were appreciative of expanding the team. And I think since then people have seen like, wow, like there's so much more to Redlands than what I thought, because we're able to send out you know, my staff to cover different events. There's more time for us to really like dig deep and kind of figure out like what stories do we want to tell from our district? Which events do we want to focus our time on? And like, what's the narrative that we want to uh, convey to our community? So I think having a team and then also the blessing of the superintendent and leadership team to kind of help with that, it's been really great the last um, year and a half. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in regards to social media, for Redlands, like how does social media fit in your role and with your department? How do you guys kind of tackle that? Yeah, so a lot of it with social media. So what we mainly use are um, Facebook, X slash Twitter, however people yeah. decide to choose that, and Instagram. And so uh, we work off an editorial calendar, which is a combination of what um, holidays and celebrations the state of California recognizes to events that happen on a yearly basis throughout our district. And then just highlighting schools here and there to kind of making sure that we cover, you know, one school here in this area or this high school's event or club. That way everyone has like an equal share of sh like telling the story to the district. And so um, we meet on a weekly basis as a team. I kind of get the insights from like our superintendent and leadership team. Uh, I do have a communications form that our principals fill out to let me know ahead of time, hey, like I would love you to uh, cover this event for Hispanic Heritage Month, here are the details. And so we kind of discuss as a team where we go, is this just purely video, is this photos, is this just a graphic, just telling about the event, and then we kind of go from there. Um, we try to at least post every day or at least every other day, so that way there's always something new and inviting on our um, different accounts. And um, with my team, you know, one of them specializes on Instagram. So she's okay. very like aware of like, oh, let me repost the stuff from the other schools. And then I have another member who's very um, aware of like what goes on X for, slash Twitter. And so she lets me know like, oh, these are the things that we're being tagged on, or these are the things I'm reposting just so you know, that way. And with their different expertise, I, I can rely on them to kind of like tell me like if there's anything that we need to be aware of on social media or, hey, this event's coming up in two weeks. I think this is something that our team can highlight on behalf of the schools. Okay. So you run a district Facebook, a district Twitter X, or district Instagram. Mm -hmm. You have 26 schools. So do those 26 schools maybe have their own social media pages that they run on their own? Yeah, so each of the schools um, have either, well, what we request them is to have both Instagram and X. Sometimes they favor one or the other. And so what we've established is that we have one admin that's assigned to each of the school's account. And then their second person, we usually tell them, oh, you could have it be one of your office managers or a teacher that's really like into posting on social media. So that way it doesn't just fall on the principal to then have to post on a weekly basis type of feel. So okay. um, we kind of look over their content reposts um, when necessary. And then if there's times where we're like, ooh, this school is not really posting that much, it's then my job to then reach out to the school like, hey, like I've noticed the last two weeks you haven't been posting at all. Um, what's up? And how can we help you if it's training? Because sometimes people, when they think of social media, they're just like, I don't know how to do this or they're afraid because they don't want to post the wrong thing. Um, right. That's where my team and I come in and kind of educate them a little bit about here's some ideas of what you can post and then kind of go from there. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, you um, got a chance to lead a roundtable discussion at NSPRO, which was really great. Can you just tell me about that experience and what kind of led to that opportunity for you? Yeah, um, it was actually a last minute thing. So 
Um, for those of you that may not know, at NSPRA, um, the last day of the conference, the morning, the first like two or three hours, there are round tables, which basically it's broken up into six sessions, 20 minutes each. So it's really rapid fire. What are like 15 minutes that I can tell about a specific campaign we did as a district, and then you allow for Q and A. Um, I at first didn't sign up for it because I was, you know, like that's that's very intimidating, you know, trying to do it six times, only having 15 minutes to explain something. But um, I'm gonna forget her name. I think it's Melissa McConnell. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. One of the members on Ensper's board. She reached out like, hey, like I know you guys won for your day in the life marketing campaign. Would you be interested? And so I, I'm a sucker for that. I'm like, well, if you ask me, I'll do it. Um, and it was great. I mean, like to share something not only because you won for that, but something that we we've done successfully that we actually enjoy doing, and to hopefully share that info to um, different districts is really a great experience. Like, I mean, for those of you that may not know, the Day in the Life campaign is a collaborative project that we worked on with HR to help increase um, um, help increase just staff members to apply for the different positions at our school district because you know since COVID there's just been just yeah a scarcity for whatever reason and vacancies so um, the first one we did was a day in the life of a school bus driver um, where actually that was my first one and I got to ride on school buses with four of our selected school bus drivers they just you know, drove, shared their stories about how they enjoy being a school bus driver, why it's important, um, why their role is important. They're not just a school bus driver. Um, they're also the first and last person that their student sees. So it's kind of like emphasizing on that story. And then from there, we created one for paraprofessionals, child nutrition service workers, and um, safety resource officers. And we just completed one for custodians. So okay. the idea is, yes, we are partnering with HR to help fill these positions that are currently vacant, but we also want to establish like, these are our people telling you why you should work at our district. And they're telling you the things that you get and the different benefits you get from the position itself. So imagine like telling this information in 15 minutes, six times, and you're just like, I don't want to mess anything up. But at the same time, I think, at least from the feedback that I received, people were just like, well, like that is an easy way to kind of help increase, you know, people work wanting to work in your district and whatnot. So, well, I think everybody listening is struggling with um, getting, you know, people in those positions, bus drivers, custodial crew, you know, all of that, your professionals. Um, so it's so cool. And what I really loved about the um, the, the gold mine sessions that you know they're only twenty minutes that means that you get to the good stuff really fast. So That's I went good. around and I didn't think I'm, I would attend all of them, Christine, like all six, cause it's like, like two hours of your time. But it was so fast and there was so much chatter. You had a full table when I was there. You said you got a little bit nervous when I was there. I was like, dude, I learned everything <laughs> I know, you know, from, from people like you. So it was, it was really fun. Um, can you give a few more specifics in regards to, okay, you went out, like for the bus drivers, you went out and, and interviewed and maybe rode along with four different bus drivers. How did that actually break down into like social media campaigns? Was it video? Was it photos? Was it a combination? Um, was it over one week? Was it just during one day? Yeah, so it was the complete package. We wanted to be a campaign where, well, first initially started as, HR approaching me and saying, oh, we need help with the flyer. And I'm always like, well, what is this flyer for? And that's how I think I, I opened up my session, right? was, we need a flyer. And, and I was just like, well, let's look a little bit deeper. What is this flyer gonna do? What's the outcome? Um, Cause I think flyers are an easy way to solve an issue of an event coming up. Let's do a flyer, boom. But you're forgetting that a flyer may not be translatable. A flyer not might not be able to get across to someone who may not receive it. And so we were thinking like, a lot of times you see videos and pictures and people can just relate or people will listen more than just reading a flyer. And so the idea that we came up with H with HR is like, let's do a package deal of, you know, wanting to have a campaign. That way the end product is that we have um, a hiring event specifically for that position. Um, so we had, so the ultimate goal was that we were gonna promote um, 
wanting to hire school bus drivers so that at the very end, we get a group of people that are interested and we do a hiring event where we interview them at the spot and let them know if they got the position at that spot. And so, so yes, it did start with a video. Um, we then expanded to like using our school bus drivers as the faces of different flyers, different social media graphics of just, they were just the ones because we thought about, well, we could use stock images, but there's something about utilizing our own people in the way that we present and promote our district, whether what, whatever that looks like, that there's a sense of pride and ownership for them. But then there's also like in the community, they're like, oh my gosh, that's Mr. Minel, the school bus driver. I know him. He drove me when I was a kid. You know, there was like establishing that relationship too. Um, and so the idea was, okay, like let's select four school bus drivers that are not afraid to be on camera because that's always hard. Not everyone wants to speak on camera. Um, four bus drivers that covers different areas of our um, bus routes because we also want to get, you know, uh, cover students that may live farther away, students that um, uh, may only ride the bus maybe in the mornings, things like that. And then also, um, kind of get like their different experiences. So we had a bus driver that has been with us since for like 18 years. And then we had a bus driver that was here five years, but they all have similar experiences of, you know, ensuring that our, getting our school, our students to school was their priority. And right. so the course of all the filming for the video took about three weeks because okay. we had to notify the families, hey, there's going to be a person for our comms team taking a video. Do you feel comfortable with that? Just if you're opposed to that, you know, we'll assign her to a different route. So luckily, like all the ones that we chose were good to go. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, I met them at six o'clock in the morning because that's when they get ready and you're just like, wow, like it's still dark outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I'm pretty much with them for the whole entire morning because they don't stop until they pick up all the kids from the different neighborhoods to the different schools, and then they have their break time. And so when it was their break time, that was when I did their interviews of, you know, why did you become a school bus driver? Um, I wanted to be a little bit more authentic. So I had a list of questions for them ahead of time that they could look at. Um, they didn't read off a script. Um, we felt that like just them sharing their experiences versus us telling them what to say was more authentic and would garner yeah. more of an appeal for those that were interested in becoming a school bus driver. Yeah. And so all that information got compiled to a video, which took a while, because again, you're filming for different school bus drivers. Um, but being with those people, I established relationships with them, took their photos because they wanted their photos to be taken. And, you know, we still utilize their photos to this day in like all of our hiring events, so. Okay. Um, and you won an award for this. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, we won a Golden Achievement Award for the Day in the Life marketing campaign. Um, when I had, uh, we had applied it, applied for this award. Oops. We're in schools. That's okay. We we have noises sometimes. It's Sorry, okay. I just paused it. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, we applied for that specific award and kind of just went through the R, RPI system. So the research planning implementation evaluation um, because there was a lot of research that went behind before even doing this. And there was a lot of moving parts in that, that we felt like, well, I think this is deserving of this award because we got to see the full picture and we've done it a few times repeatedly. Um, yeah. And so I applied it. We didn't know if we were going to get it, but I was so happy when we did because that was the very first campaign like we did as a team and submitted on, to our district. And it all started because somebody needed a flyer. <laughs> that is really I, how. <laughs> I know. And I love that because it's so true. Like, you know, um, and you asked all those questions. So I know why you've been as successful as you have. Been. Um, you've gone on to do a lot of other. Well, first of all, we'll give a, we'll give a link to the bus driver video in the show notes. I'll make sure to get that from you. So listeners, if you want to check out what uh, Christine put together and what she described, you can you can see that. And I know that you had some real great success with people to turning up and getting hired for all those positions. But now thinking about some other unique campaigns for social media, 
um, you know, this was maybe one of the main first campaigns, but can you tell me about some of those others that you've done? Yeah, so we did a couple social media specific campaigns. Um, we did, so obviously throughout the school year, there's different recognition weeks that, you know, the, the state of California recognizes and, you know, advises if we want to share that on our school districts or not. So we really wanted to highlight school counselors who have a, like a dedicated um, week, I believe, end of January, early February. And so um, I actually saw this on another um, school district. They did ABCs with their counselors. So the idea is that you choose about eight to 10 counselors and you go, you utilize the alphabet. So A, all through C, asking them questions um, about what they like and didn't like using the letters of the alphabet. So I guess A was like, what was your favorite academic subject? And B, what's your favorite? I don't know what starts with B. Look, I'm going to say B. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't forget that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was more of like a get to know your counselor because one, it helped kind of bridge um, who these counselors are with the families and because, you know, counselors do a lot of working with our students, connecting their families. A lot of times they may not be familiar who they are. And so it was a way to connect our community to our counselors. Um, we did that for the whole week that it was there. And we got a lot of positive feedback because they got to know their counselor um, a little bit more than just, you know, the person that meets with their student. But then they actually got to put a face to the counselor because sometimes they either hear from the counselor on the phone or through an email. Um, so we got, so um, we've been doing that two years in a row. We'll do it again a third year around next year. Um, another social media uh, campaign that we did was meet your principals and assistant principal. Um, so every year um, we either have new principals or new APs because you know they're shuffling around in the district or there's mm -hmm. new opportunities. So then we have new APs and principals. And myself as a parent in the same district that I get to work at, I always feel it's important to know who my principal is prior to the school year. And so for this specific campaign, we capture all the new principals and APs that are recently hired. And we do a little get to know you bit with them. And so we ask them little questions like where they grew up, what's their favorite book or item. And it's a really brief, quick questionnaire. We use utilize their picture. We use some kind of cool, fun graphic to kind of complement that. But we release it two weeks before school starts. So that way for a family that's like, oh my gosh, we have a new principal. I have no idea who they are. They go on social media and they see like, oh my goodness, that's Dr. Burton who she's actually my son's principal. That's why I'm using her as an example. Um, that's Dr. Burton. This is who she is. Um, you know, I know all these fun details about her. It helps reassure the family's mind. Like, okay, I know who this person is. I could put a face to the name and I look forward to hopefully meeting this principal or AP in the near future. And so we've gotten a lot of positive um, engagement with that because a lot of times um, you don't know until school starts or you get like that friendly email blast through a communication tool, like, hi, I'm your new principal. Um, a lot of families appreciated that. And I yeah. think that helped a lot with um, getting even our new principals and APs more acclimated to their positions and their new school communities. They can feel the love before it yeah. even starts with some of those comments and welcoming. Exactly. So those were more campaigns. You obviously every day are celebrating the great things happening. So how do you encourage your staff to get you stories or to invite you into the classroom? I know you mentioned the principals have a form to fill out where they can request your mm -hmm. presence, right? Yeah. Okay. And then how else do you, um, you know, try to get stories from your staff? Yeah. So over the year, or uh, since I've been here, um, I try to go to as many meetings as I can, either if they're district wide or at the school sites. Um, I think part of the being new when I was new in 2021 is people didn't know who I was. And so they're like, who is this random person with their camera just randomly taking pictures? So sometimes people are hesitant with that because they see a camera and they're like, what is this for? So I did my first six months kind of establishing those relationships with the principals or different staff members that I would see. Um, and part of that is just, you know, explaining to them, I'm like, I'm here to tell your guys a story. Like you are doing amazing things at your school site. Some parents may not even know that, like, that's what my job is for. And so um, I think over the years, I've kind of established relationships with most of the schools. Again, we have 26 schools and that's a lot, but that's why I have my team and they're doing so great going able to doing all those great things at those school sites. Um, I, I try to get a meeting with 
either our student leadership team to, okay. to even like um, meetings at um, just collaboration meetings, just yeah. so that people know who I am. And a lot of times people don't think of sharing their event or sharing something that's happening until you say, hey, if you have something to share, tell me. And they're like, and I kid you not, they'll email me right there in the spot. Yeah. All of a sudden I have like 20 emails to answer. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. events, but that's a way. I mean, we also um from my office, we um send out a monthly e-newsletter where okay. we have on there as well, like we showcase different stories that we want to feature for the previous month. And we've been doing that for almost a year now. And because of that, people are like, oh, like I saw you highlighted the you know, visual arts program here, like we're doing something in the next couple of months. Is this something that you, your team can help cover for us as well? And so that kind of helps with that too. So, yeah. 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 It's like positive peer pressure, right? Like, yeah. it's like, Hey, we're doing really cool things too. And especially mm -hmm. when you look at it from the standpoint of this is really a reflection on our students. Um, some yeah. of our staff is pretty humble and they're like, I'm not doing anything great, but I'm, I bet if you asked, are your students doing something amazing? They'll say, oh my gosh, yes. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. So um, just to wrap up, what would you say is your best social media tip? Ooh, I would say my best tip, um, if possible, and whenever it's appropriate, utilize your own students and staff to promote the things that you're doing at your district. Um, I think it's very comfortable and very easy to use stock images because they're available, they're everywhere. Um, especially when you're doing like a quick flyer or a quick video and you just need to have a picture of a student, you know, doing an activity and then boom, there's your promo for the event. Uh -huh. um, but we have seen in our department when we utilize our own people to celebrate something or to promote an upcoming resource event that there's some pride that comes with that. And there's some association of like, oh, that's my teacher. Like, you know, there's like a connection. And I feel like, you know, it's hard to, since the pandemic, it's hard to get people back into like wanting to do things in person or coming out to events. But I think things like that, where we utilize our own students to communicate something it establishes like this trust and connection that people say like okay like this is a district event because I recognize so-and-so as a teacher or I recognize a student or sometimes they hear students say oh that's me mom let's go to this event like I want to go um if if I mean I understand like you know there's media releases and you know certain people don't want to be um videotaped or have their pictures taken but I feel like having that um establishes a, a, some sort of pride for you as a school district and a school site, but also establish that connection because I think people see that like, this is, you know, part of the community. This is a community event. Like I want to go. Um, yeah. And that's, I think, yeah. I was well, that's just a great tip. I mean, <laughs> real, I mean, and that connection piece, like I could see it even Christine, even if you don't know the student, if it was taken in a classroom, it's like, hey, that's one of our classrooms. That's not like yeah. this fancy thing that is like obviously a stock image, right? Exactly. And especially, I mean, and I'll add like one more little tip when it comes to videos. Students have a lot to say. Uh, when you ask them, like, especially when I think about one of our STEAM labs, um, when they're constructing something using a 3D printer, it's easy for me as um, someone that's like looking at it from an outside perspective. I could be like, okay, this is a 3D printer, a student's working on it, this is the project, blah, 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 that's it. But then you get the student in front of a camera, get them comfortable, and you ask them like, why did you take, why are you taking this class? What's the importance of creating this project? They'll go on and they'll talk. And it's like, you see how prideful they are because they are the ones that, that completed this project. And like, you just hear things from their mouths that you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily think of when you're, you know, behind the camera, behind the scenes of putting this all together. And so I think that's also important that like highlighting students' voices is a very huge component of what we do. I mean, it's why we have this job is because we want to highlight um, our kids. Right. And I mean, so yeah, some of them are shy, but I think the, the awesome part with kids is that, you know, you have fun with them. You make them feel comfortable. You say, hey, you might be YouTube famous or hey, you might be on social media. Like, like what do you want to say? And they come out of their shells so well and the big thing is is you don't have to share the whole video I mean sometimes it takes a minute 
for them to get comfortable, but then all of a sudden they'll share something really, uh, you know, powerful and you can just share that little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I love the thing, the thought that, you know, they, they do have a lot to say if we take the time to ask them, we're not bothering them. Um, they understand social media, they understand influencers, um, and, and you can really be surprised and you don't have to have a fancy, I mean, we all got one of these in our pocket, Christine, yeah. right? we got a cell phone. So we can take some video um, and it can be really authentic that way. Yeah. Awesome. So our time went really fast and it just flew by. We could probably talk for hours um, with all the great mm -hmm. stuff you guys are doing there. We're going to make sure that we link all of your social media channels so people can check that out. I'll share the link of the um, day in the life. And then I'll also, I just want to share a link to one of your meet the principal posts. So that'll be in the show notes for you guys as well. Um, if somebody wants to um, stay connected with you, Christine, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, um, I would say either email. Um, do you want me to say my email here? Yeah, you why want... don't you just say it? Yeah. Okay, it's a very long email because that's how we roll. So it's Christine. So it's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E underscore Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S at redlands.k12.ca.us. Okay. Yes, it's a very long email. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's that. Or you can find me on Twitter. Um, or sorry, X, I should say. I apologize. Hey, we're we're all still getting used to that. So still I, getting... you can still say Twitter. It's fine. But um, what's your username? It's C Stevens PR. C Stevens PR. I love it. Well, we're gonna make sure to link to both of those in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, I'm really excited to watch you continue to celebrate the great things happening in your school. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. I'm going to CalSPRA. Are you going to be at CalSPRA in the yes. spring? Yes. Yay. I will I will see you there. Um, yeah, and and I, I'll introduce you to my team when I see you there. So they'll okay. be there as well. Yeah. Awesome. I'll have hugs to give out. Uh, luckily, we can hug again. So that is good. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with us and everybody listening today. Thank you so much. Reach out to Christine if you've got some more questions on these and we will be back here next week with a fabulous guest. And until next time, you guys keep telling those stories. Bye, Christine. Bye.